Get ready for an adrenaline rush. In a dazzling display of engineering prowess, just under two weeks after the triumphant Flight 5, the iconic launch pad Starbase roared back to life with a breathtaking static fire test of Booster 13. With Flight 6 looming in the horizon, excitement is at an all-time high. But that's not all. SpaceX has just reached a milestone, celebrating the monumental 100th launch this year with the ever-reliable Falcon 9. And across the globe in China, a draw-dropping SpaceX replica has just made its grand debut, capturing the world's attention like never before. So buckle up and let's dive into all the thrilling details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. After B-13 arrived at the launch pad on October 22nd, preparations for its static fire test were clear, especially with the announcement of road closures. By the morning of October 23rd, B-13 had been lifted onto the orbital launch mount. Once in place, the scaffolding was removed and additional systems were tested to ensure readiness. On October 24th, with chopstick and ship quick disconnect systems secured, final preparations began. By 1 p.m. Central, the road closure was in effect and the pad was cleared. By late afternoon, the OLM and tank farms were venting significantly as fueling began. Frost levels on the booster quickly rose, especially in the liquid oxygen tank, which filled faster than the liquid methane indicating an upgraded fueling process. Liquid oxygen was eventually fully loaded, while methane reached roughly a third of its capacity. At 7.11 p.m., the water deluge system activated, followed by a powerful ignition of B-13's engines. Frost on the booster reflected the flames, creating an impressive glow around the OLM. Like previous tests, the engines produced a strong layer of dust and smoke that covered the surrounding area. Based on the observed thrust and the test's duration and approximately 9 to 10 seconds, it's likely that all 33 Raptor engines fired, generating an estimated thrust exceeding 7,000 tons, demonstrating the booster's formidable power. Once the engines shut down, Detanking began, and the road reopened around 9 p.m. With no reported issues on the pad or with B-13, the test concluded as expected, marking the completion of all B-13's individual testing. Now, it stands ready for the next stages in its launch preparation. In the coming days, B-13 may be transported back to the production site. SpaceX has scheduled brief road closures for October 25th from 10 in the evening to 12 midnight, and again on October 26th from 12 noon to 3 p.m., likely in preparation for moving the booster from the pad to the factory. Once back at the Mega Bay, B-13 will undergo post-flight evaluation, with particular attention given to its engines following the recent test. These engines will likely receive upgrades to improve navigation, deceleration, and safe landing capabilities. For the next flight, B-13 will likely be caught by the Mechazilla arm, as demonstrated by its predecessor B-12 in order to validate this landing method. Additionally, SpaceX will need to address the warping issues seen with B-12's engines, an essential step to making these engines reusable. Beyond the engines, other systems like the grid fins will also require upgrades to prevent any minor damage during flight. The grid fins, like the engines, play a crucial role in guiding the booster during challenging landings such as those with Megazilla Arm. In the near term, SpaceX may also add a hot staging ring to B-13. A similar component from B-12 was recently recovered in the Gulf of Mexico, although it showed some warping. Still, it remains in reasonably good condition. SpaceX plans to enhance the system before installing it on B-13. After these upgrades, SpaceX will likely roll B-13 back to the launch pad, potentially alongside its companion S-31 for integration testing. Having completed its own separate testing, S-31 may soon join B-13 on the pad for the next stages of preparation. The static fire test for B-13 was completed less than two weeks after Flight 5, setting an impressive pace. At this rate, integration tests are likely to occur in early to mid-November, with Flight 6 potentially launching in late November or early December. SpaceX's momentum with the Starship project is wrapping up an extraordinary year, laying essential groundwork for even more ambitious milestones in the coming years. Key tasks such as booster catching, building the refueling system, and advancing the Starship HLS program are all vital steps toward preparing for NASA's Artemis III in 2026, followed by Mars missions in the years beyond. But first, there's Flight 6. What are your predictions for the launch date? Drop your thoughts in the comments section down below. 
I'm sticking to my previous guess of November 23rd, which is also Gwyn Shotwell's birthday. Will it turn out to be prophetic? Let's find out together. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to stay up to date on SpaceX's incredible journey. Next, let's dive into an exciting update on a significant milestone for the Falcon 9. At 1.13 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on October 24th, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from SLC-4E in California, carrying a new generation of spy satellites for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO for short. This mission, dubbed NROL-167, highlights the ongoing collaboration between SpaceX and the NRO. Following a smooth ascent, Falcon 9's first stage returned to Earth approximately 8 minutes after launch, landing precisely on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You stationed in the Pacific. 167 marks the fourth launch under the NRO's proliferated architecture, a constellation of smaller resilient satellites designed for enhanced capability and durability. Previous missions under this initiative, 146 in May, 186 in June, and 113 in September were also launched aboard Falcon 9s. In addition to its mission role, this Falcon 9 launch marked several important milestones. The booster B-1063 achieved its 21st launch and landing. Now among the leaders in SpaceX's booster reuse record, B-1063 steps into the spotlight, following the retirement of top performers like B-1061 and B-1062. This mission also marked the 105th landing of the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship and SpaceX's 358th booster landing overall. Perhaps the most impressive milestone, this launch marked Falcon 9's 385th mission and its 100th flight of 2024, making it the fastest SpaceX has achieved 100 Falcon 9 launches in a single year. 100 launches in a single year, an unprecedented achievement in rocket history, is what truly distinguishes Falcon 9 from its competitors. This remarkable milestone not only highlights SpaceX's commitment to innovation and efficiency, but also reflects the tireless efforts of the entire team behind this groundbreaking rocket. To mark this significant accomplishment, we invite you to join in the celebration by flooding the comments with 100-F9. With this momentum, SpaceX is determined to maintain the Falcon 9's strong performance through the end of the year. So what do you think? Are 48 more launches feasible in this time frame? We'd love to hear your predictions and insights. Your engagement helps foster a vibrant community around space exploration, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's keep the conversation going and cheer on SpaceX as they strive for even greater heights. Wrapping up the SpaceX updates, let's take a look at some interesting developments in China with a new new SpaceX Dragon lookalike. Chinese startup Deep Blue Aerospace recently unveiled its suborbital vehicle aimed at offering tourist launches beginning in 2027. At first glance, the vehicle closely resembles the Dragon capsule, mirroring design elements like the hatch, engine compartment, windows, and heat shield on the capsule's bottom. The main visual difference, Deep Blue's capsule sports a blue and white color scheme instead of Dragon's black and white. According to Deep Blue Aerospace, this capsule will stand 4 meters tall and 3.5 meters wide, offering 6 seats, 6 windows, and the capacity to carry 1.2 tons of payload with a total mass of 7.9 tons. Capable of reaching altitudes between 100 to 150 kilometers, the capsule will allow passengers around 10 minutes in zero-gravity environment. It is designed for reusability up to 50 times, with tickets priced at 1.5 million yuan, or about $210,000 per seat. Deep Blue Aerospace also introduced the reusable orbital rocket Nebula 1, which is expected to undergo vertical takeoff and landing, or VTVL, tests in November. Visually, Nebula 1 also appears inspired by SpaceX's Falcon booster. The company shared that Nebula 1 will undergo multiple recovery and reuse trials by 2025, followed by extensive tests on their spacecraft rocket combo in 2026. The goal? To validate the safety and reliability of their suborbital system in preparation for commercial suborbital travel by 2027. However, Deep Blue Aerospace isn't the only Chinese entity with ambitions in space tourism. CAS Space, a spin-off of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is also working on its own crewed suborbital vehicle with a similar aim of operational readiness within a few years. While the plan is undeniably ambitious, many previous Chinese copycat projects have faced significant challenges, often stemming from a focus on mimicking exterior features without fully understanding the underlying technologies involved. 
This approach has led to a range of setbacks highlighting the complexities of aerospace engineering that extend beyond mere design aesthetics. As we look to the future, it'll be interesting to see if Deep Blue's rocket system can defy this trend and successfully deliver on its ambitious promises. The coming months will be crucial in determining whether they can translate their vision into a functioning and reliable rocket, setting a new standard in the industry. Let's keep an eye on their progress. Otherwise, folks, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.